Jets, we're back. You ready to rock? Ready to go. I'm always ready to rock. Here we go. Oh! Get Victor, get Victor! Get an ambulance. <laughs> get an ambulance. <laughs> Boom, right off his stock. Straight off his melon. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> With a long range shot, the arm's up. It's a point. He was one of the great guys. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome. To a very special episode of Freddie in the Eighth with my two dear friends Andrew Johns and Brad Fittler coming to you live from the glorious surrounds of Allianz Stadium. It's been so good this year. All the semi-final games have been actually we haven't played it. No, we didn't play. Not one. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we didn't use this ground. This what? one here, we didn't Have use a look it. Look at it. I oh, know we didn't use yeah. it. Anyways, yeah. even with no crowd here, it's an awesome building. Next, Next year. year, top eight, neutral grounds. Where are Penrith going to play? Their semi. Well, they want to play at a core, but the NRL is saying if they play Melbourne, that'll look bad on television. So they want them to play at Combank. Yeah, Combank. Right. Oh, that's Hello? A... 45 here? That'd, yeah, be, that'd work beautifully. Coming from the rift to here. Well, Penrith at least played going a from, heap of finals at, at the Old Football Stadium. At least going from is halfway to... Uh, it's also Parramatta's home ground. Yeah, that's irrelevant. Tigers too. Well, here, part of semi, well, part of semi-finals <laughs> was, not just about the players coming into the... The big smoke to play footy. It was about the fans coming in yeah. and come and watch their team, come to Sydney and... What's the word to describe? Pilgrimage. Hmm. The pilgrimage to come and watch your team. Get on the in train. In the big smoke. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Now, <coughs> the old footy stadium. 88, first year? Yeah. How many pilgrimages did you make to the old footy stadium from Newcastle? As did a you fan? Yeah. As a youngster? Uh, no. Oh, Never you didn't? to watch. No. Right. I came down in the juniors, played juniors here, juniors like under 21s. Mm -hmm. Did you won a comp here, didn't you? No, reserve grade, got beaten in the grand final. Oh, here. right, sorry. And played. 97, you won here. Yeah, well, 97. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course, a, 97. Kid, yeah. But as a kid, I was playing uh, under 21s, I was 17 then. And do you remember your first game at the old footy stadium? Well, I went to the last grand final at the old ground, at the yeah. SCG, when um, Manly beat Canberra. Yep. Kevin Ward. Fat, he was captain. Yeah. And then two years later, I was playing in a semi-final against... Uh, my first semi here was against the Tigers. And we got beat by the Tigers. Is that when Blocker, Ciro, all that? Yeah. That was all of them. And then the week after, we played Canberra. So it was Mal, Laurie, that team. <laughs> Wait, I'm 17. <laughs> and was it an awesome feeling oh for you coming oh, out? It was a at great a ground Daytime. Yeah. They were all good days. Because in uh, those so days, you didn't beautiful. really play here during the year. You didn't play here at all. No. You played Origin here. Mm. But the then... Roosters later on started playing yeah. but they used to play at the sports ground. Mm. I know it would never happen because of capacity, Freddie, but as an Origin coach, oh, yeah. could you imagine an Origin here? Yeah, it frosted. would just be unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't been here for a game, and don't even worry about it. It doesn't even have to be rugby league. Mm. Just come and experience this stadium because it is, like the atmosphere gets yeah. trapped in the place. It's like a cake tin, isn't it? I used to love the grand final because when you'd come down, mm. you couldn't see, and as you come out, you said that. Boom! Now we are going the to the balloons. They used to let balloons off. We're going to we're going to we're going to try and film you walking out of the new stadium. We'll it's not patch the same. you into the show. No, but but, but it's different because you Flat. walk through the members. Yeah. And you know it's a bit of a different feel, but we'll we'll get people uh, an inside in, look into that. I'll Speaking, put it in the overtime sheet. Sp yes, do that. Speaking of atmospheres, now you said on Sunday at Newcastle, mm. that's the best you've ever seen. There, now you. Yep. Fans used to turn up in their droves to watch you play. Mm. So it's a different experience as a player and a no, commentator. No, 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 no. You can still remember the big days when we were playing. So mm. was that emotional or did you mean yeah. that? No, no, totally. When Dominic Young went down that sideline and um, Tyson Gamble got that intercept mm. drop ball and the crowd stood as one, that, that's the best atmosphere I've ever seen there. Mm. I'll stand by it. That's amazing. Yeah. It's okay. Especially with the first half, they, they weren't playing that well. And then... Once the the alleged bite happened, then it just went. Vroom. What was it like, Simon? Unbelievable. Yeah, and you know what? It was unbelievable because the first half Canberra did so well, it mm. kept them quiet. And mm. there was a definite change when the 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 biting incident. It changed the mood of everyone. Everything got a little bit more savage, mm. and you could just see they started getting nasty. And every time Jack ran the ball, they were. Oh. You know what, because the fans are so well educated up there, I, I think mm. the first half they were nervous probably like the, the team. The team looked a little bit nervous the first half, although Canberra played outstanding. Yeah, they were really good. 
But once the team started to believe in the second half, then the crowd started to believe. Mm. It was unbelievable. It was and a they, great day. It was a great day for everyone involved at the club. They had two Newcastle chants in the first two minutes. I know. That's nervous. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Normally yeah. it takes a while and everyone's getting their seat. They were nervous. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were well and truly in their seats. They, were, they got there from 9am mm. to line up at the front gate. It was, it was just a memorable day at the footy. Mm. Good and stadium. You know why too? Because wind comes through. Mm. Wind in our game's good. Makes it interesting. Mm. Especially like, you know, kicking balls. And I've got to say, um, uh, the halfback for the Raiders. Fogarty. Fogarty. He was outstanding. You know what we haven't spoke about in that game? Kalen pretty much kicked every goal. Nailed a couple from the sideline. Two yeah. from the sideline. The first one was an absolute mm. ripper. That was the same sideline he missed all those missed. goals. Two from the sideline. Yeah. yeah. One on the game in the end. Well, you mentioned Canberra. I just want to say, to the Raiders players and fans, there's two teams involved in the game. If they hadn't have been as good as they were, that wouldn't have been the yeah. afternoon it was. They were, that was, they were exceptional. Well, we, we saw a look to the future with some of their young forwards. Moriata. Yeah. Moriata. Yeah. Emre Gould. Jizzy, Trey Mooney. Jizzy, he's a big boy. Very good. I forgot Joseph Tupper. They played for Newcastle. Yeah, played in the back row there. And Tom Starling. Starling. Gee, about a few. Captain of the 20s. Did he really? Yeah. Sami Solo. Yeah. Sami Solo. He's a local boy. Greg Inglis. Boyd Cordner. Greg Bird. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been inspired to see Kalen stand up there at the end no, and, and win the so game. Good. So good. Absolutely so good. There was a moment there when he went down on kick chase and launched. Yes. At Jordan Rapiner, which we spoke in commentary and went, mate. You, you nearly fainted. You've got a bad shoulder, mate. It's not your job. But epitomises what it means to him. He's just, a, I think mean, we'll look back at this 10 week period and just marvel at what we've seen. Mm. I had that good moment with him on the field after. He would have been running to the car. Mm. It was unreal. I had one here with Latrell. had a moment with Kayla after the game. <laughs> they, put, they put the interview to the big screen. Yeah. And I just asked him what it was a lot to play in front of the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Did it go on, on air at yeah. nine? Yeah. Mate, you got to see it. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. I said, what was it what? like? And they just went mad. Let's, let's put it in right now. Kalen, congratulations. Have you ever played in front of a crowd like that before? No, I haven't. <laughs> what, a, uh, what a roller coaster of a game that was. But uh, I think they got us home. Look at them. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Newcastle. Love yous. Yeah. <laughs> We spoke at the toss about what it means to the city. What was it like playing in front of this crowd from my point of view, the mental side of it? You were behind, you got to the front, it looked like you had it, Canberra came back. What was the mental ride like? Yeah, like I said, it was a roller coaster. Um, yeah, you're in, you're out, you're in. Uh, we fought hard for that one, it wasn't the prettiest game, but uh, to get that win in front of this crowd, it's pretty special. He's the king, he's the new king of Newcastle. Mm, new one. Skateboard and all. Yeah, that's right. Owns every property on the beach at Merriweather. Oh, um, Jack Whiten went to the judiciary last night, obviously a, a fairly hefty suspension. Both of you were of the opinion, and I think a lot of people didn't want the game ruined, so I understand it to that extent. Mm. But the rule book says if you can prove a player has bitten someone, it is a send-off. Mm. Well, back so to the letter of the law, he should have been sent off on well, Sunday. I thought they managed it really well. Managed. Did a great job. I thought they managed it. Yeah. They could have... They could have jumped at it and made a real rash decision. Um, look, part of me is like Tyson, get your arm away from his mouth. Mate, You're choking him. It's, and it was there and it was tight. He had him in tight and it was right across his teeth, or right in his mouth. That would happen in 80% of tackles in a game. Would not like that. No, no. They don't go there. What happened to the young girl at Parramatta? That's right. She was sent off and got two weeks. Yeah, but get your hand away from their mouth. Do you remember the Benny Elias and... Mario. He bit himself. <laughs> Benny bit himself oh, and went up and said, Sir, look, Mario's Dude. bit me. Mario, gone. <laughs> oh, there's bad blood oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> so Gus said I'm 100% footy. Biting, eye gouging, squirrel gripping. Mm. They're the three. Mm. They're the three no -nos. How many of those have you had in your no career, nose. boys? No no. <laughs> <laughs> in, in your case, one of them you particularly like. Yeah. How many times have you gouged? The other one was, was gouged. The other I've one been was, gouged. The other one gouged? was tripping. Tripping. Yeah. Well, we can do that now. Everyone. You can just trip, you get a fine. Mm. Who gouged you? 
I'm not going to say who. Who did he play for? England. We played oh. England at Wembley. Oh, right. Yeah. Was this 90? A proper gouge? Yep. Oh. I've had a few play gouges, but never serious. Never Got his fingers player. right in there. And I was I pinned have, like that. I couldn't imagine how scary that would be. Mm. What about... It um, is scary. What about it squirrel is. gripping? You've been squirrel gripped? Not on the field. <laughs> <laughs> It was that time at DCMs when I was, <laughs> when I was on the podium. Nathan Stop. Wood. <laughs> Stop. Nathan Wood and Fletch. The famous Bites Gibbsy, Johnny Gibbs, yeah, yeah. who had half his nose removed by Tommy Ritonicus. Tommy, yeah. You've yeah. been bitten? No. No. Really? No. No. Who's the player you'd least like to be bitten by? I'm trying to think of some bad teeth. Oh, Cameron McInnes. <laughs> Mate, those things are that big. <laughs> Lindsay Collins. Lindsay Collins. <laughs> He's missing some. That'd be oh. all right. Cameron McInnes. When he comes off and he's rogue and that tooth's out, honestly. Willie Mason. Yeah. I'll just be uh, piano, piano just, starts Just singing. give me a litre of technus. <laughs> just pump it into me. Yeah. Boys, I don't know. I don't know if there's any merit in this, but there's a story that's leaked out through Sydney Radio this morning. A caller rung the Ben Fordham show on 2GB in Sydney to complain that Latrell Mitchell wouldn't take photos with kids at a rugby league gala day in Penrith. He signed autographs and shook hands, but said no to photos. Why? We don't know. The management company that represents the trolls come out and said it's not uncommon for him to not have photos, but he's there to shake hands, sign autographs. Well, he shook hands and signed autographs. Yeah. Just because you don't do a photo. Yeah. Come on. Like, you know what, you've got to understand how many, with phones now, the demand mm. for them to go in public. Do you want them not to go in public? Mm. Mm. And the trust element. You want them not to go in public. I feel because, like Because, well, you just, what happens is you just take all their time away. All their time. Yeah. They have no social time. Yeah. Because of cameras. I feel like with Luttrell, there might be some trust issues at the moment. There's been a lot of, oh, of, lot of media scuttlebutt Mate, of doing course. around. You'd probably think everyone's Mate, out there. Getting... Well, seriously. Are you surprised he's made himself unavailable for Australia? No, not really. He's had an operation on his hand, hasn't he? Well, I, I, think, had... that's what, I think there's an issue with his hand, yeah. But no one, we hadn't heard about it until now. Well, he's got to get, get himself right for pre-season. Yeah. Hmm. Mate, so... So then blokes who don't make the semis have got, what, six weeks to play a test? So you've got to do another pre mini pre-season. Mate, six weeks to play a test and they have two weeks off, play another game. Yeah, but it's a, it's a test jumper, isn't I, it? I, I mean, you that, two, you two mate, are this fortunate. Is, so this some is, people never get one. Like, this do, you is, not, do, you not, do you not encourage mate, people to do everything they I can do. to play for the country? Play a burnout. You've got to think of the NFL played 16 games in the Super Bowl. NRL, Junior Polo last year played 36 games in the front row. You're only born with so many bumps. This is like the Players Association and what a bigger say in scheduling and stuff like this. And we all support international footy, but we've just got to get it right. It's a big ask. I don't mind the Pacific test. I think, I think we need to sacrifice at some stage to improve Absolutely. that system. And yeah, I think, so, I think okay, there's enough so, support. So we go to less games in the competition? Well, well, that's not going to happen. There's a broadcast. Yeah, I know that. That's, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. In a perfect world, you say, right, we're going to play a test at the end of the year. Instead of playing 27 Well, it's going to have to be like cricket. You play 22. Where you just, people get rested at certain stages and, hmm. uh, you know, but we don't have the numbers to do that at the moment. And, you, and you'd need a whole fleet of people underneath to train younger kids up. So that sort of, you know, pushes the whole system forward faster. But, um, yeah, we don't have the people. You, it'd be unsafe sometimes to put people out there in a the first grade game. Okay, what about Cameron Murray? What would your advice to be? Cameron Murray towards the end of the year was just seeing coming off. Mm. In origin, you could see it's him. It's kind of a six-week break, though. Yeah, but he's got to keep training. There's a big thing of checking out and finishing up. In your head, I'm going to get right. Yeah. I've got to keep training. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I wonder if you can do it in other sports. Like, because footy's hard, like you said, because what you do is you check out and you go, right, I'm checking back in November 30, whatever your start date is. Mm. Like in cricket, do you reckon it'd be easier to check in than it would be? For footy? Well, yeah, it's, not a, it's not a contact sport, so yeah. Yeah. Mm. So to get yourself up to play, you're going out to get bashed. Yeah. It takes a lot mm. out. It's a yeah. lot out of you. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't one. know what the answer is. I mean, the lure of an international jersey. Oh, of yeah. course. It's the ultimate. Mm. It's the ultimate. Mm. Well, the big boys flex their muscles at the weekend. Penrith and Brisbane. Can anyone go with them? That's the big question here in the finals. Welcome to the 2023 NRL final series. Well, this is goosebump stuff. What a reception for the dual defending premiers. 
The Broncos in the storm, and a month-long roller coaster ride starts now. What a day for it! And what an occasion! Stags beats one, beats two, beats three, four of them, and I the a scoring. And they've got an overlap here, and Toto, Toto! They're bang for blood. Reynolds to Walsh, Walsh, Walsh! One more to survive for the visitors. They won't do it. It's Martin off a Cleary pass. Penrith get a second. Walsh again. This time passes Ricky. Cleary, Cleary in the hole and a try to the local hero. And that sends the Panthers into a week off and another grand final qualifier. Brisbane have broken the hoodoo. And they're 80 minutes away from a grand final appearance. Well, they are undoubtedly the two teams to beat in the competition. And at the moment, you find it hard to imagine the Broncos and the Panthers won't be playing each other in the grand final. Yeah, it looks that way. Mm. It, lo- it, it looks that way, doesn't yeah. it? Well, Barring they'll them. come in healthy. A million percent. Mm. A lot of the other teams are buckled, aren't they? Oh, Roosters are buckled. No one's wanted outside the top four. Roosters are brave, though. Oh, they're buckled. Oh, mate, this anyway, weekend, surely. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I want you to, to go through these two teams, Brisbane and Penrith, and name who has the better um, key areas, if you will. Mm. Now, for, do you need your glasses for this, Brad? Yeah. Because you, you've lost your main glasses, but the, you do have a substitute pair. These are the glasses I leave in my bag in, you case, this? in case of emergency. Who's got the better back line, Brisbane or Penrith? They are Brisbane. harming the Broncos. Brisbane. 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 Yeah. They're unbelievable. I've got to say. So I'll just quantify that. Back line, first five. Let's leave the halves out. Yeah. Yeah. Fullback wing centre. Yep. Yeah. Right. Fullback here. There. I reckon they could go in the Pepsi Challenge with anyone, that team at the moment, and would be as good or better. Yeah, they're fabulous. On their, on their day. What's the Pepsi Challenge? Well, remember they used to always go, they used to do the thing where they put a Pepsi and a Coke, oh, yeah. and then they go to the public oh. and they go, oh. And they always I would just, never get that wrong. They, I have, the it tastes completely it. different. Yeah. I don't know how anyone gets that wrong. Coke's heaps better. You're a Pepsi man. No, I'm not. <laughs> who's got the Who's got the best spine? Uh, oh, well, Nathan, is this Kenny. with Jerome or yeah. without Jerome? Yeah, with him because he's back. He'll be back next game. I'd say Penrith. They won two comps with them, haven't they? Yeah, by Although, bees. not the hooker. Five bees. Yeah. Mitch Ford, Kenny is the player. Forward pack. Hmm. I'll go Penrith. Just once again. Their experience. Brisbane are so much more athletic than everyone. Mm. I, I think, think what uh, gets them in front, Penrith, is Liam Martin. Without Liam Martin there, I would say Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, best attack, best defence. I mean, the Panthers have got the best defence in the world by Best defence, Penrith, best attack, Brisbane. Mm. Brisbane are great to watch. So, as it looks at the moment, Brisbane will play... Knights or... Knights or Warriors. Mm. And then the, the clash between Penrith and Melbourne slash Roosters. Yep. Well, against Brisbane, whoever wins the third. Good shot, man. No, um, that's right. Whoever wins between the Warriors and the Knights, that's, that's <laughs> going to be a big ask. And then the other side, well, the Storm, they've got to beat the Roosters. How many players are out? Storm can't beat Penrith. Hmm. Well, they've been flogged by them twice already this year. Yeah. It'll be a Penrith Brisbane grand final, and what a grand final it'll be. Mm. Mm. You see it here, live and exclusive on Nine. How are you feeling for the Sharkies? Mm. That, Two years in a row. That was, that was almost an unlosable game in the second half, there, wasn't it? Player, Zedesco in the bin, three well, blokes busted. Well, if you compare that to the Brisbane Storm game on Friday night, it doesn't compare. Sure. Yeah. Like that was a high quality, mm. Brisbane Storm, high quality semi final. The Roosters, Cronulla wasn't. It was a club game. Cronulla, uh, there, was, there was a passage, there was two passages, where they made breaks and they looked. And their blokes were like 30 metres back. Mm. Mm. Well, that was with the game on the line. I'm like, what does that tell you? Well, I just thought, I don't know. 
I don't know. Well, it's not a physical thing, it'd be a mental thing. Just tired. Right. Just tired. They looked tired at the end of the year, didn't they? Yeah. Well, they, they looked tired, then they came good. And... Because every time they play, they're a tough, gritty, hard-working team. So to do that week in, week out, now, they had limited success against top eight teams, and I think their biggest winning margin was at like 10 points or something. Mm. So there's not games when you're high-flying and beating them by 30. Well, they haven't got enough superstars. Like, not much. Know, there's, then there's no X Factor. Yeah. There's no Munster. There's no Kalon. Oh, you raised that on Sunday. Yeah. So who, what position are you thinking there? Well, in the I mean, They've got Kennedy and Tracy are both very good toiling fullbacks, but they don't, they're not flashy. They're all they? good players. Yeah. They're, they're all, all good, good and they work good as a team. But you get no cheap ones. You get no free ones. Mm. Sometimes when you've got a star or, you know, you get a couple of free wins where the score just ticks over. Mm. But they, they've got to work so hard for all of this. So and, who, and, who and, would... and those players, Cale and Reese Walsh, Munster, you know, those X-Factor players, in big games, they go, whoosh, they find another gear. Mm. They, can, they can play faster, they can play better, which then drags the team with them. Cronulla haven't got that player yet. Feels like there's a lot of pressure on Nico Hines in that team, isn't there? Mm. Oh, yeah. But not, not just the X factor of, of having someone that can jag a child, like you say, but to give him a bit, a bit of respite. Mm. Well, he seems like it's him or nothing. He floats every side. Yeah. He gets the ball three and four times a set of six. And I think that's where Will Kennedy hurt a lot. Yeah. Connor Tracy's a good player, a good strong player, but they needed more flair. Will Kennedy gave him that. You could give him early ball and he could set up a try or score a try, and they didn't seem to have that. Kate Dykes will be an interesting one next year, coming mm. off the ACL. I haven't really seen much of him, is he? Yeah, he's there he's a gun. Yeah, good mm. player. He might be that spark. But where you get him from, there's, you know, you've got to think outside the suite. Look at Canberra years ago. They went and got those pommy blokes, Hodgson, who else? Mm. Um, Elliot White. Elliot White. Jeez, he was good the weekend. John right. Bateman. Go to England. John Bateman. John Bateman. Go to England. Go to Rugby Union. Look for some of these X Factor play. Or go and identify the best young 18 year old Will player. Will Warbrick. And mm. go and get him. They should have signed Dan Laurie. Could I? Mm. He's a good player. Mm. Well, the finals continue this weekend. Two gripping games Friday night and Saturday afternoon footy. It's going to be two cracking games. You'll see them here on night. Roosters Storm, renowned for their sustained excellence over such a long time. No one knows finals footy like the Storm and the Roosters. For 20 years, they've dominated the finals. Now, we are ready to heat things up. It's sudden death. The Storm, desperate to bounce back. The Roosters on a roll, gunning for eight in a row. That's another one! A do or die finals blockbuster. Storm Roosters. Friday, live and free on 9 and 9 now. Everyone in rugby league was absolutely devastated mm. when Ryan Pappenhausen was oh. injured with the broken leg. Seriously. Now, do you know what? I'm prepared to admit it. I nearly cried. Mm. I could feel myself welling up. Friend of the show, Ryan Pappenhausen, we wish you well. The, the news is it's not. It's bad, but it's not catastrophic not like compound. everyone was thinking. So mm. it didn't pierce the skin, that's the first thing. And they're hoping that they might get him back to do some pre-season and maybe get him fit for round one. Well, there you go. I think both Melbourne and Paps need a break here. Mm. And Melbourne have gone without a really good high-paid player for a mm. couple of years now. And obviously the person sitting there just recovering constantly from injuries is just... It'd be a real wear on your mental health. Yeah. Let's get your tips for the two big games this weekend. Friday night footy, <sighs> live and free. Just, from just on, on Pappenhausen, sorry. Is that the same leg, the patella? No, it broke it down here, didn't he? Yeah, but is it the same leg? As the knee? Is it the knee? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. But it, I don't think so. Um, Storm Roosters, Amy Park. It will be chockers. By the way, the AFL's across the road at the same time. We might be walking to the ground. I'm not doing it. I'm going to New Zealand. Oh, are you? Choice, bro. Oh, good. Mm. I'm actually going down. I'm going to watch Collingwood train. Oh, yeah? Yes. They've got the week off. They're into the, yeah. the grand final quarter. So no Jared, <laughs> no Satui Tubanua, no Joseph Manu, no Billy Smith playing with a broken jaw. Well done, Billy. No That's Suali'i. Right. Means no win for the Roosters. Sure, like, surely Storm put 
dirty on Still got Teddy, still got Kiri, still got Walker, still got Smith. So you're going to have Siwa Wong in the centres. Who else are you going to have? Corey Allen, maybe in the left centre. Yeah. Would Daniel Tupo come back? Ponga. No. Tupo's no, out. He's gone. He's out, is he? Yeah. Right. He's gone. Yeah, I saw so, him the other night in the break. Did you say Hargreaves as well? No, Hargreaves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, so I'm saying no yeah. Hargreaves. If there's one team who can exploit a weakness, it's the Storm. So. You don't think Harry Grant will play bad twice in a row, do you? Well, he wasn't allowed to play because their forwards got smashed out of the park. The front row was for, for um. Do you to change the centres? Has, well, well, he has to, but they're injured, aren't they? Um, Olam's right to go, I think, and Remus is right. Got, so no, they're both right, no. Uh, Seve, no, Tonin and Pia went off. Yeah, they came back, though. And he came back. Uh, and I don't Remus Smith not in the team? He's been Well, we don't know what's going on inside, mm. but from the outside looking in, Olam and Remus would be centres. Yeah. If you're picking the team, wouldn't you? For sure. All right. Storm? I'll buy plenty. I can't pick the Storm. Roosters. Roosters. Go, Freddie. Warriors, Knights. How good. That will be frightening. What, what happened when you were coaching over there? Did you, you coach in New Zealand in front of a pack? I coach? coached in the first semi final over there. So, what happened was we got beat by Brisbane here. We came fourth, I think, third or fourth. And they, beat, they came out. Beat eighth Melbourne, who came out. Beat That's Melbourne. Right. And then the rules at, in those times. They got the home semi final. They changed the it the year after. Is that the McIntyre system? It was yeah. ridiculous. So ridiculous. Anyway, so we got blokes, there. Blokes giving you these ones. Right? So they called it the blackout. So everyone wore black. They had the lights out. And in those days, you had to walk up the front of the grandstand. <laughs> hey, pretty bro. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> but we're actually all in at halftime. And then, you know, got us. Lance Ho Oh, yes. He's a good a player. Good player. I called my first NRL game for nine, mm. 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Uh, at Mount Smart Stadium, I caught it with Gus and the King. Do you have any idea how popular the King is in New Zealand? Yeah. They okay. love the King. He stood in the stand and they lined up right the way down the stand and just stood there and got autographs. Like for, and he was just, it, did, it spent an hour. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Love the King. And we, uh, we go up to the Mad Butcher's suite, myself and King, before a game over there, and the Mad Butcher's hilarious. We were up there one time and Helen Clark was there. Prime yeah. Minister. She told me a funny story about Sir Peter Leach, the mad butcher. Uh, Sir Peter is dyslexic and he sent her an email. Some of the words were a bit... <laughs> <laughs> he said, I won't say it, but he went to say, we were very rapt that you came to the game and you right. didn't spell it right. So the mad butcher's Sir Peter Leach, it's his services to charity he was knighted for, mm, wasn't Yeah. Does a lot of work. Mm. He's a very passionate man. Um, so how much is left in the tank for Newcastle, emotionally and physically, mm. after Sunday? Well, it's going to be a test. It's going to be a real test. Well, that's so played, Sunday. Played 90 minutes. So they play Sunday. They'll get, uh, when do they, they'll travel over on uh, Friday? Thursday. Thursday? Yeah. Well, they'll get one session in. One, one session. For the week? Basically. Mm. They'll train normally, they'll train Wednesday, travel Thursday. They'll have a run over there. And a session over there. One session before they leave. I suppose they've won 10 in a row. They don't really need to, no, really yeah, need to work. Well, they won't do anything. Much. Well, yeah. they won't train it much these days. It's yeah. just this time of year, everyone's busted. It'd be interesting. Sort of... The start of the game, they'll just, you know. Do you reckon they're nervous? Or nervous. Do you, or do you think that the Raiders are charging? Mate, they're big now. The win, the, the win. kicking game. Um, the tries came off a Newcastle dropout. A tackle off drop first it. scrum, yeah. uh, first tackle off the scrum. Mm. What was the other try? When uh, oh Jack White, Jack White, and when um, mm. Tyson kicked yeah. out on the full. So like, they come from nowhere. That's from mm. Canberra. So I think they can look at it and go, well, you know what, our defence wasn't that bad. So let's not get too nervous. But it was a very nervous start. Mm. A lot of drop balls. Mm. The, the pressure to that end is on the Warriors then. They're, they're having to yeah, all the endure pressure. the same mm. the same build up that Newcastle. All did last the pressures week. on yeah, the Warriors. I think, but they got beat. They got beat by Penrith. I think you know, everyone's expectations will drop a little bit. Yeah. I feel. Do we know? Do we know if Sean Johnson is? Look, he's he's been named in the squad, but we don't know yet. It's all it hinges on him, doesn't it? If he doesn't play, Newcastle win, don't they? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Who are you tipping? You can't sit on the fence here. Well, of course I'm going to No, not you. 
It's going to take a big effort to win over there from the Knights boys. I believe they can do it. Mate, the, the Knights are going better than the Warriors. I'll go to the Knights. The form the fullback specials. Kalen might do it again. What's the weather doing? Have you looked at that's the weather? That's fine. Don't ask. No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. Mr. Wood's checked it. When's the last time you, 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 you surfing? went on holidays in New York? I was going to go to Ragland. I haven't got time. I even consider, because we're going over Friday. Yeah. And because I'm giving the guts to Channel 9. Good time. I'm doing live crosses for, He's giving for the leaves. news. Peter Over. giving Pete. body parts. I'll be doing stuff for you. I was going to go down to Ragland. I even considered getting up Saturday morning at 4 in the morning and driving down and having to surf and coming back up. You're aware the game's on Saturday. So you're getting there Friday. So yeah. you do have plenty of time to go surfing. Yeah, but mate, the time difference, we're flying out here at 11, I don't land till 4, which means leave, once I get my earlier. bags in the hotel... Why don't you go earlier? Mate, I've, just, I've got to do Freddie the 8th, I've got to do immortal <laughs> behaviour, I've got to do tips. Mate, father of the year, house husband of the year in mm. eastern suburbs. Mm -hmm. Mate, I've just got so many, I've just got so many things. That'd be hard. Uh, anyway, yeah. The life so of the eighth of it. we should do a show. The life of the eighth of Ginge. Let's I'm do giving a show. A, Ginge, I'm giving a gust to Channel Nine. Let's do oh, a Ginge, show. Your Ginge house. isn't here anymore. Ginge hasn't been here for ten years. Yeah. My Thanks, house. boys. Yeah. Do a yoga session. Let's go do some earthing down on the field. Looks beautiful down there. That's Freddie in the eighth. See you next week. With the finals around the corner, NRL on Nine has your cover. From match highlights, press conferences, and don't forget Freddie in the eighth. Of course. NRL on Nine has you covered for everything one-stop shop. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a moment.